Hey, what's up, guys? Um, I know it, it's been a while. I haven't done a video. I've been out of it. I've had just so many things happen. Just lots of stuff. I'll, I'll get into it another time. Uh, just right now, I just wanted to throw something quick. And you know what? I probably may have said some of this stuff before. And I'm pretty sure I have showed you these tubs before. But at the time that I was showing them, they had already had babies in them. Um, they're all empty now. Don't have anything. And I'm going to uh, reset it up. And so I guess I just wanted to give a quick rundown of what I'm using and how it's used. And again, these are uh, 66 quart tubs. So I've said that in probably one of my other videos. Um, they're plastic. I like them for several reasons. One, uh, super light, right? I mean, get a get yourself a 15 gallon tank and you won't be able to move it around, kind of throw it around, do some of the things that you can do with this, as you can see, and not have an issue. Number two is um, the corners, all of these are rounded. This is all rounded. So you get a constant flow, you won't lose, you won't, for some reason in glass tanks, sharp edges, sharp corners, the um, fish, especially the fry, they'll find their way into those little corners where the silicone is, kind of get in there, and then just get stuck and not be able to get out and die. Um, so this rounded corners, they keep going. Um, also plastic holds temperature better, so the plastic will be able to um, maintain temperatures. You won't have so many fluctuations like you would with a glass tank. And they're cheaper. I mean, honestly, this was, the, these cost, these were $5.99 I paid for each one of these. They have the top and everything with them. Top seals, plastic, 15 gallons. Uh, paint the back blue, just one side blue so the fish don't see each other. All the bottoms of all of these are painted black. You can see it's painted black on the bottom of all of these. That's just so the um, males, after spawning, they're able to go out there. Since they're bare bottoms, they won't see their reflection. They won't see anything. They can go out there. They can um, scoop up all those eggs pretty easily. And um, it'll help them also with taking care of the fry pretty easily. Um, and that's pretty much the whole setup. That's it. Now I'm going to actually fill them up with water and everything today. And I'll show you some of that. And I guess in the meantime, while I started doing it, I didn't really know what else to uh, talk about, so I just started throwing a bunch of things. I'm also going to be making um, green water. And that's just to, uh, that way when I have fry, I've got the water on standby already. And I guess the green water's got the uh, microscopic organisms and everything that the fry can uh, also eat in there. So I'm going to show you how I do that. These are actually mason jars, small mason jars. I got these in the store. It was like a pack of 24, and I can't remember. I want to say it was like maybe $10. It could have been a little bit less. It was 24 of these. And actually, I have bought these not for this. I have bought these, and um, maybe this is a screen top. I made these into screen tops. I was actually using these mason jars for um, small tarantulas when I was getting tarantula slings. And that was my initial setup with that dirt, little plant in there. And then I was having my tarantula slings in there with the uh, screen top, mesh top. But today, I'm going to be doing this with um, just prepping everything for the, uh, when I do start getting fry again. I'm a little bit behind on all that. So I'm just going to start getting all that ready. And um, I said, already mason jars. Each one, I've already put inside of it. Each one already has, I don't know if you can see. They've got their, uh, their vegetables. So one of the things that you want to do with that, a little bit of vegetable matter. I've got a little bit of lettuce, a little carrot in there, and some other stuff, a little, little green bean. Um, vegetable matter, and I'll be right back and kind of show you a little bit more of the other steps that I do. Just uh, hang on one second. Alright, so here is um, some boiled water, and pretty much uh, what you're going to do is just pour a little bit of this water without burning yourself or anything. Just pour a little bit of water in each one and what that helps do is um, kind of helps break down the vegetable matter and I'll show you what the uh, next step is after that but we're going to pour a little bit of boiling water in each one and I usually let it ooh, I usually let it <laughs> rinse off let it cool off for about 10 minutes I actually have a little bit extra water here because I am going to make, um, I use gel fish food sometimes. And I've got a uh, gel food for preconditioning that I'm going to use for that. But we will use the boiling water, let it cool off, and then I'm actually going to top it off with, <laughs> I got some plants and I always get plants and I like to 
buy the plants and say, give me a lot of water, please. Whenever I go, they pull up the water from their plant tanks. And I'm going to use some water that I got from a plant tank. And this was um, one of the stores I go to. They have their own little plant tank. And they actually have a few of them. And they have some that they just sell. All they have is just this bunch. And you know, for 2 or $3, they say, give me get $3 worth. And they reach in and grab a bunch, put it in a bag, and usually give it. But I always have them say, I always um, ask them, can you please fill it up with water? They kind of know by now. I use it for the fry and everything. So I'm only going to use a little bit of this. And then I'm going to use what I have here is um, some water. Some water that I took out from an established fish tank already. I'm doing a water change. I'm going to use some of that water. And then over here, you see some of that dark water. That's actually rainwater outside from um, some containers that I have. So I have some containers outside and I use those. I um, It has leaves and other branches and just dirt in there, general natural stuff in there. And um, pure rainwater, just collects rainwater. And I've actually got, um, I actually scooped out, I guess last week before it started getting cold. I went in there, I threw a, a, a bunch of fry in there that I just had left over. Still didn't have the time to raise them anymore. And I just threw them out there in that uh, container left it like that all natural and I've been like that for several weeks and actually I went in uh, last week to collect some of that water and I saw a few of them in there so I grabbed the net started scooping it was actually a lot more than I thought all in there I scooped them all out brought them inside put them inside one of my other tanks with some of the other fry that I had here and they were actually bigger fatter and more brightly colored than all the fry that I raised in indoors here so um, raising them outside in the pond actually works but point is that water has Lots of organisms ready, lots of microscopic stuff in there. This plant water has lots of microscopic organisms in here. And so does that um, used up water from a water change. So we're going to put all that in these jars once they cool off. Then these jars, go; just, they just go right on the windowsill just to collect sunlight. And um, you know, you'll get the, the green bloom. And that, that'll be uh, the microscopic stuff that you need for the, um, for the fry. And what I usually like to do is... For these containers here to set up for the breeding, I'm actually going to, you're not going to fill this up all the way, okay, so it's going to be hard to see, cause, just because everything's painted, but you're only going to come up about this much, about this much water I'm going to fill in here in this container, and um, what that'll do is, I'm going to use a mixture again, I'll put a little bit of that pond water from outdoor, outdoors in each one of them. And then it'll be with um, freshly made tap water that's conditioned and everything, obviously. Um, I use a little bit, a handful of this salt. This is not marine salt. This is freshwater salt. This is like the best thing that you can use for fish. It's actually, anytime I have a fish that may be sick or especially after breeding, if they've been fighting and they've got some fin damage, I will put just a little bit of this in their water changes with fresh water. Completely cures them. Not too much, you kill them also, so just a little bit, a little teaspoon. And I'm gonna put fresh tap water with the water conditioner and a little bit of salt. And I'm also gonna mix that in with the, the pond water and a few drops of each one of these from the plant water into each container. And then each container is gonna get plants. I'll put a handful of plants in each container, and that'll be the um, essentially the setup that I'm gonna have for my breedings. And that's that's the containers there so it's gonna be um, it'll be about nine of them that I'm gonna set up this week and uh, I'll show you once I've got the the pairs in there and hopefully once we get some bubble nest I'll do another video and I'll show you that um, hopefully that water starts turning green I'll show you that and I think that's pretty much it for now I guess we'll get together I'll do another one maybe tomorrow or maybe later and um, just to get another video out there and like I said hopefully I'll have everything set up by then um, so I can go over again how I did it but it's pretty much how I just explained a little bit of fresh water tap water that's conditioned and a little bit of that pond water um, some plant water with some plants in each one um, let that settle in for like a day then I put the uh, the breeding pairs in and I'll show you how I set that up and then once my uh, once these little mason jars from the windowsill once they get once they've turned green and I start getting green water out of that I'll put some of that in too. And pretty much the idea of that is I want to have as much um, microscopic organisms in the water as I can. That way when babies are born and starting to swim around, they've got stuff to pick at. 
and I'll have the uh, brine shrimp nursery set up by then. I pretty much, once I usually see babies, I try to set up the nursery, the brine shrimp hatcheries, sorry, brine shrimp hatcheries, um, a day or two after I see fry wiggling around, um, because it takes about 24 hours for the eggs to hatch, and it takes the fry about two or three days to start eating. So in between that time period, they've got some stuff to pick at, and as I'm also giving them the brine shrimp, and I'll also ha I also have some microworm cultures and other cultures like that. As I start doing some of those things in there, they're also eating some of these microscopic organisms that are growing in, hopefully. All right, um, I'll probably remember something later. But... All right, guys, like I was saying, I'm probably going to remember something later. Um, the first part of this was shot earlier today, and then um, I was taking a shower, getting ready, and then I remembered, ah, oh, there was one more part that I wanted to put in for it. And actually, it's going to be a little bit easier now that I actually have a cameraman. Um, earlier I was, you know, had it hanging around and I was trying to shoot it myself, but real quick, you can see this is the uh, amount of water we're putting in each one of these tubs, and that's about it, and even then, that's a little bit on the higher end on all of these, and this is where we're going to set up for the breeding, and real quick, look at that male, look at that, Just, I scared him away, but um, we'll see when he comes back in. But anyway, one of the points I wanted to make is um, sometimes, well, a lot of times people ask what's the hardest part about raising the betas or breeding betas. And, you know, first, first right off the bat, first thought is always, you know, beta fry are pretty small and pretty delicate. They're usually the, uh, one of the hardest fry, you know, to get right. A lot of other fry, the parents kind of raise it themselves. Betas, very small. They only eat moving food. Um, so it's kind of hard to get them going. After that initial two week period, they become much easier, like all the other fry of most of the fish but initially they have a, a harder time but even then that isn't the hardest part of breeding betas I think the hardest parts of breeding betas is this right here and you see what you're looking at empty tubs the hardest part about breeding betas is having patience just to wait you know like I set up that uh the green water green water cultures that's gonna be about three or four days I've got some other worm cultures set, getting set up I've got some vinegar eels all that's going to take a few days before you can start harvesting and um, you're also feeding the, the adults lots of live food lots of high quality food um, to get them conditioned for about two weeks so the biggest probably most difficult part of breeding and raising the betas is just having the patience having the patience to uh, make sure you set up everything properly get all your steps and if you're properly prepared for everything um, breeding them and raising fry becomes much 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 easier and runs more smooth um, so that was the, uh, I guess, the, the point that I wanted to make before I forgot. Stop swimming away! I'm trying to, trying to look, get a nice view of this one, but he just keeps swimming away. He wants no part of the camera. And. And these are the uh, some of my females. Just redid this tank. You can't really see it, but I used a lot of the uh, pond water that was showing you earlier. Went in here, and it's got a brownish tint to it. Kind of looks. It's got a, it's like a slight tea look to it, but I don't know if it's coming across in the video. Kind of looks clear the way I'm looking at it. And there he goes again. God, you're too pretty to be camera shy.
y'all guys, that was just the one point that I quickly remember, and I was like, you know what? Instead of doing a whole separate video for that and trying to show off the fish a little bit too, I'll just um, edit that, put that back in for the one from earlier, kind of plug them in together. Well, actually, I won't because I don't know how to do any of that. I'll have my son do it. He'll try to edit it for me and take care of that. And um, yeah, I'll have better pictures on uh, my Instagram page. Go check out Instagram. It's uh, splendid underscore betas. Um, check me out there. Check out the pics. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.